So um, let's start by talking about amines, uh, where we have this typical secondary amine, uh, diethylamine. And diethylamine uh, has a nitrogen with one lone pair, and thus it has four domains, or is sp3 hybridized at nitrogen. And it's only a moderately electronegative atom, um, or nitrogen has an electronegativity value of 3.0. So it's more electronegative uh, than a carbon atom, uh, but it's much less electronegative than something like oxygen. Um, so because nitrogen is only moderately electronegative, um, it's a moderate base, or it's willing to donate that lone pair to a proton. And it's also a very good nucleophile. So in acidic solution, uh, where the pH is less than seven, um, generally the amine is fully protonated as the ammonium ion. And we'll see that protonation state below. Um, <clears throat> so if the mean is to donate this lone pair um, to a proton, uh, then it will become its conjugate acid, or we have the ammonium ion. Um, and these ammonium ions are generally pretty weak acids and their pKa's are around 10, sometimes as high as 12. So uh, in aqueous solution, these two are in equilibrium. Um, but the amine also has a proton itself uh, that it can lose. So not only is it a weak acid or not only is it a moderate base and a good nucleophile, it's also very weakly acidic. And the pKa of this proton um, is usually in the mid 30s, about 35 for a secondary amine. <clears throat> so if it is to lose that proton, then the nitrogen will have two lone pairs, a negative formal charge, and we call this anionic nitrogen an amide ion. So that name or functional group name is used twice in organic chemistry. Uh, both for carbonyls that have nitrogen bound amides or carboxamides uh, and for these amide ions. Um, and these compounds are super basic and that's reflected in how high the pKa is for the conjugate acid, right? For example, we've seen uh, the use of these super bases throughout the semester, uh, such as amide NH2. We've used that to deprotonate carbon many times uh, we've also seen another really common amide base, such as LDA, where you have two lone pairs on nitrogen, two isopropyl groups. So this is lithium diisopropyl amide. Um, so we're going to talk about some of the uh, relative basicities of nitrogen containing functional groups, uh, first by looking at hybridization. So um, hybridization is going to determine electronegativity. And um, here we have a primary amine where there's one CN bond. And uh, in unit two of this course, we learned how to make this functional group where you have a doubly bound nitrogen. Uh, remember that this is an imine. And in unit three, we learn more about nitriles uh, or C triple bond N when you have the cyano functional group. So going um, from left to right, the nitrogen hybridization is sp3, the imine is sp2, and the nitrile is now an sp nitrogen. Remember that when you have an sp3 atom, it's one part s and three parts p, or 25% s character. Uh, for sp2, it's one part s and two parts p, or 33% s character. And finally, uh, for an sp nitrile, it's half s, half p, or 50% s character. And increasing uh, s character means that we're increasing electronegativity. 
uh, or that S orbital likes to hold on to electrons uh, with a great affinity. So the sp3, which has the most p character, is the least electronegative. And the sp2 is an intermediate electronegativity, while the sp nitrogen is the most electronegative. Okay. <clears throat> so what we see here is that as s character increases, uh, the electronegativity increases, uh, which means if you have a proton on that atom, then the acidity will also increase while basicity goes down. So amine basicity is a function of hybridization where the sp3 nitrogen will be the most basic or the least electronegative. The sp2 amine is an intermediate basicity <clears throat> and the sp nitrile is going to be the most basic or the least basic of this series. Now, that basicity is going to be reflected in the pKa's of the protonated forms or these conjugate acids here. So, an sp3 ammonium ion is the least acidic or the most basic and has a pKa value around 10, as I mentioned. <clears throat> if we increase the S character to sp2, where it's 33%, now the pKa drops to five, or it becomes 10 to the five times more acidic. And finally, a protonated nitrile, this is about the strongest acid I could ever imagine, uh, where the pKa actually drops to negative 10 uh, for that super electronegative nitrogen. So this nitrogen really wants to get rid of the positive charge and become neutral again. So just by doubling the S character, we increase the acidity in going from the ammonium ion by a factor of 10 to the 20, uh, or the pKa drops 20 units from the ammonium to this nitrilium ion. So when you're ranking basicity of amines, you should think first about the hybridization um, and the orbital that that lone pair is residing in. Um, but other factors also affect basicity for amines, just like they do for all types of acidic protons that we've seen all semester. Um, so thinking about electron donating versus withdrawing groups is fundamental to almost every reaction uh, we do in this course. And remember that induction uh, can be defined as either the donation or withdrawal of sigma electron density. Or we're donating or withdrawing electron density through sigma bonds. So for example, we know that methyl is a sigma donor, an electron donating group, uh, where those CH bonds are generous and willing to overlap with empty orbitals and donate some electron density. Um, whereas CF3 or trifluoromethyl uh, is a very strong electron withdrawing group because of the electronegative fluorines. So please remember that not just for nitrogen, but for every compound, that electron donating groups increase electron density at an atom, such as nitrogen, and they thus increase stability of that atom with positive charge. They make a positive charge more comfortable. Thus, the electron donating groups increase basicity and they decrease acidity. So they make an atom less willing to lose its positive charge or to repel a proton. Okay, conversely, sigma electron withdrawing groups like that trifluoromethyl are going to decrease the electron density at some atom. And therefore they will decrease the stability of that atom bearing a positive charge. 
they make it more electron poor, which makes the positive charge worse. In other words, the electron withdrawing groups will increase acidity uh, while decreasing basicity. So I'm going to do some problems here where we rank uh, from most to least basic, uh, starting with the lone pair at each of these sp3 hybridized amines. So they're all the same hybridization. Um, so now we want to think about nearby groups. And the amines on the left here are both tertiary, where they have three carbons bound. Uh, but the others are secondary, where they have two carbons and one hydrogen. So in general, for amine basicity, having more carbons bound or tertiary means are more basic than secondary means, which are more basic than primary means, if all else is held constant. So all of these methyl groups are going to donate electron density towards the nitrogen atom. And so the one with three methyls or three sigma donors here is the most basic. Um, and then the tertiary amine that lacks those methyl groups is number two. So next are these secondary amines. Uh, this one here, pyrrolidine doesn't have any donating or withdrawing groups to compare. Um, so it's number three. While we have a methoxy and a fluoro derivative that have electronegative atoms bound. So the methoxy and the fluoro are both going to withdraw electron density, uh, but the fluoro is more electronegative. So you guys have seen uh, this methoxy group is a donor sometimes, um, but this is not a pi donor in this case because the oxygen is sp3 or it's not conjugated with any pi system. So there's no resonance donation. You cannot push this lone pair in. It can't donate a pair of electrons because it's not conjugated through any sort of double bond. So then it's just an electronegative oxygen nearby or the inductive electron withdrawing power of oxygen will cause it to be number four, the second least basic and the fluoro derivative is number five. So adding more electron uh, withdrawing groups or more electronegative atoms like fluorine and a greater number of them will, in will increase the acidity uh, or decrease the basicity of the nitrogen atom. So the next problem here is gonna combine um, a couple of these concepts we've discussed so far. Once again, ranking uh, relative acidity. Now we're looking at the acidic proton <clears throat> that's on the positively charged nitrogen atom. So first you want to think about what the hybridizations are. So the initial nitrogen that's bound to the hydrogen here is sp in the nitrile, in the aminium ion, it's sp2. This nitrile, once again, is sp. And the final imine or aminium ion is sp2. So we said that sp2 was more basic than sp. So in terms of acidity, the sp nitrogen or the more electronegative nitrogen is going to be more basic or more acidic because it's more electronegative relative to sp2. So one of these nitrile derivatives is the most acidic. And now we look at the substituent that's nearby. This one has a chlorine, uh, which is primarily a sigma electron withdrawing group. 
and that's going to increase acidity or make the nitrogen's positive charge even worse. And the other one has an ethyl uh, and alkyl chains, sp3ch bonds or sigma donors. So that should stabilize the positive charge a little bit or make it a little bit less acidic. So the most acidic here is the chloro derivative of the, of the nitrile and then the ethyl derivative. And now we're comparing the two sp2 nitrogens, both of which are aminium ions. One of them has a sigma donor um, or a methyl group, which will donate some electron density towards nitrogen. So that's going to be less acidic or more uh, electron rich relative to just a hydrogen in that position, which neither donates nor withdraws. So the methyl group will stabilize the positive charge a little bit and make this proton the least willing to dissociate uh, or makes the nitrogen atom the most stable with the positive charge, the most electron rich. <laughs> So sigma donation and uh, withdrawal are part of the story, uh, but we can't completely understand uh, amine reactivity and basicity unless we think about resonance or pi electron delocalization as well. All right, so pi delocalization is uh, either the donation or the withdrawal of electron density through resonance. And of course, resonance requires conjugation. So the atoms have to have p orbitals that are parallel and overlapping forming pi-like interactions. So remember that atoms with lone pairs, commonly we see methoxy do this. Those can push a lone pair into a pi system. So those are pi donors. Uh, while electrophilic groups like carbonyls, uh, as you've learned all semester, will withdraw electron density towards the oxygen. So those are known as pi withdrawing groups. Okay, But the key is they must be conjugated to have these pi effects. So once again, electron donating groups will increase the electron density at a nitrogen atom, or they would increase its stability with a positive charge, therefore increasing basicity while decreasing acidity. And electron withdrawing groups do the opposite. They decrease the electron density at an atom such as nitrogen. <laughs> And therefore, they would destabilize a positive charge, thereby making the atom want to get rid of the proton or get rid of the positive charge, making it more acidic and less basic. So let's look at a couple problems where we have some pi uh, donors and pi acceptors. Okay, so this one right here has no uh, functional groups bound. All of these nitrogens have a single lone pair. That's the basic lone pair of interest. And they're all sp2 nitrogens. So once again, hybridization is not changing here in this first problem. Uh, what is changing is the substituent bound. So the ketone is a pi and a sigma electron withdrawing group. Okay, it's a pair of electronegative atoms nearby. That's why it's sigma withdrawing, but it's also conjugated. 
And you can draw a resonant structure where there's a positive charge on the nitrogen. So that's going to decrease basicity relative to just the plain old imine here. Conversely, the lone pairs on the methoxy group, now they're conjugated or they can push into the pi system and you can show negative charge build up on the nitrogen. So this nitrogen is electron rich while this one's electron poor. An amine like this one is also an atom that can donate a lone pair through conjugation and push electron density onto the nitrogen. And if we call methoxy a good pi donor, then we should call the nitrogen a great pi donor because the nitrogen is less electronegative. So it's more willing to donate electrons uh, than the oxygen. So we'll have a greater negative charge build up here with the amino substituent. Finally, for this nitro, it's also a conjugated pi bond to an electronegative atom. <clears throat> and it's a, therefore a pi and sigma withdrawing group. Um, and you guys learned in the reactions of benzene that this was one of the most deactivating for benzene's nucleophilicity. Well, that's another way of saying it's one of the strongest pi and sigma withdrawing groups we have while a ketone is only a moderate pi and sigma withdrawing group. Because the nitrogen here is more electronegative and has a formal positive charge. So this really is begging for electron density where the carbon is a little bit less electronegative for the ketone and doesn't have a formal charge. So here, the one that has no donors nor withdrawing groups uh, in the middle is just the plain imine. And the most basic will be the one with the best electron withdrawing group, the amino. Number two is with the methoxy pi donor, which is still quite good. And the nitro makes this nitrogen the most electron poor or the least basic. And the ketone is an intermediate basicity. So one more problem now that combines these concepts where we have some electron donating or withdrawing groups across the ring. Um, and we're looking at sp2 nitrogens again, right? Where we have an acidic proton of interest as one of these H's on the aminium ion. So they're all sp2 nitrogens. The only difference between them is the substituent para. The ketone, or excuse me, this time it's an ester connected through the carbonyl carbon is withdrawing electron density. That is once again a pi and sigma withdrawing group. Similar to a ketone, it is moderate. A stronger withdrawing group is this nitrile because the sp carbon and the sp nitrogen are very electronegative. So we'll call that a strong pi and sigma electron withdrawing group. Okay. So remember that acidity is going to increase as electron density decreases, um, or the most acidic will be the compound that has the electron withdrawing groups. Most acidic is the one with the nitrile. And then the one with the ester is number two. Okay, the other functional groups here have lone pairs that are directly conjugated with the ring. Or these are pi donors. Where once again, the nitrogen is a great pi donor. 
if you look at this conjugation, because it's para, it can donate into the benzylic carbon and feed this nitrogen here some electron density. Or these atoms can share that positive charge and further stabilize the compound. The oxygen of the ester, right? Notice this is just an isomer of the other ester. But now, because it's connected through the oxygen, that lone pair is conjugated with the ring and can donate towards the iminium ion, similarly to the nitrogen. But this one's only a moderate pi donor. The reason it's only moderate is because this lone pair is also conjugated with the carbonyl, which is withdrawing. So it does not donate as effectively as the amino group. So the least acidic is the one that has the best pi donor or is the nitrogen that is the most um, electron rich. So we've been talking mostly about the basicity of localized lone pairs so far, or those that are in uh, sp3 or sp2, or maybe sp hybrid orbitals. But delocalized lone pairs, or those that are shared through resonance, are going to be generally less basic, less willing to protonate than those that are localized and not in conjugation. So thinking about the orbital that the lone pair resides in is a fundamental step in understanding the relative basicity. And we'll start with these three amines here, uh, where we have benzylamine. Um, and the nitrogen is next to an sp3 carbon. So there's no pi system that it can donate into. It's isolated from this benzene ring. So the nitrogen is truly sp3 hybridized. And it has a lone pair in an sp3 orbital. Aniline has nitrogen adjacent to the benzene ring, uh, where now that lone pair can donate into the ring and be shared through resonance or conjugation, which means this nitrogen is actually rehybridized. Uh, it's now sp2. And the lone pair is not in an sp2 orbital, but it's in a p orbital. That's why it's making pi-like bond uh, with the ring. Finally, for this five-membered heterocycle parole, uh, this nitrogen is also sp2 because it has a lone pair that is one away from a pi bond or it's participating in resonance, which means that that lone pair is also in a p orbital. Okay, but uniquely that lone pair is not just in a p orbital, it's in the aromatic system. Where if you think about this compound from a side view, each of the atoms uh, is sp2 hybridized and planar and has a p orbital that's perpendicular to the plane of the aromatic ring. And those p orbitals are all pi bonding. You can draw a molecular orbital where they're in phase. And there are two lone or two electrons you can designate to one orbital and the others have the other four. We have six pi electrons here. So this lone pair is super stabilized in the aromatic system, or this would never protonate because protonation would destroy aromaticity. So the least basic is this parole compound. And in general, if you ever have uh, a compound where you're ranking basicity, 
and that lone pair is in the aromatic cycle, it will be the least basic of all. I can promise that. Um, now, this lone pair on nitrogen is delocalized. But it's not in the cycle, or it's not part of the ring, OK? The cyclic ring are these six carbons here. The ring is aromatic, no matter whether or not the nitrogen is protonated. So the nitrogen is not an endocyclic atom. So aniline is a little bit uh, more willing to protonate or more basic than parole. And then finally, the one that has no resonance uh, or is simply localized is the most basic. The sp3 nitrogen does not forfeit any conjugation when it protonates. And therefore, it's the most basic of all. So please remember that delocalized lone pairs are going to be generally less basic than localized lone pairs. Um, and delocalization to the extreme is aromaticity. And the last thing we would ever want to do during an acid-base reaction is forfeit aromaticity. OK, um, so we've also seen nitrogen containing compounds in the context of carboxylic acid derivatives like amides. And amides have a lone pair at nitrogen that's not really a lone pair, right? This lone pair is conjugated with the carbonyl. And so it is not basic at nitrogen, but it is basic at oxygen. And we can explain that by drawing the Zwitter ionic or charge separated resonance form where there were two lone pairs on oxygen, but now there are three. And there's a positive charge on nitrogen. So we see that there's double bond character here. And we've known for the last couple months that amides uh, are very much stable and resistant to reaction. These are very um, stable, in other words, at the bottom of the reactivity ladder. And there's very little positive charge of this carbonyl carbon um, because of the nitrogen, or it's acting as a pi donor. Um, so what that causes is the electron density to reside on oxygen, or the oxygen's electron rich, and the nitrogen's electron poor. So the oxygen is the basic atom. And if you protonate an amide, which we do many times in the first step of an acid catalyzed mechanism, if you use strong acid, then this will protonate at oxygen, not at nitrogen. So another question you could be asked that will quiz this idea of amide pi donation and this double bond character is being asked the number of unique proton NMR signals that would show up. So initial inspection here uh, will show you that the methyl groups on this isopropyl are completely equivalent, right? Because you can freely rotate about that carbon-carbon single bond. But the proton, of course, at this tertiary carbon is unique simply because it's bound to a different carbon type from the purple ones. Now, there are no protons at the carbonyl carbon. Um, and if you didn't think about the double bond character here, by drawing this important resonance structure, uh, then you might think that these methyl groups are the same. But they're not. Right? One methyl group here is always cis to the oxygen and probably more electron rich or upfield on the NMR spectrum. The other methyl group is always trans to the oxygen. And those cannot interconvert or they cannot rotate to interchange place because this bond is a pi bond. 
or there's a double bond character. So here we get a total of four proton NMR signals. Where these methyls are equivalent, but the N methyls are not. Okay, so keep in mind that there are many um, consequences of that Zwitter ionic resonance structure for stability, for reactivity, understanding where the basis or where the basicity lies at oxygen and how these methyl groups are in non equivalent places or electronically unique environments in the compound. 